we got some sales figures. Tekken 8 has been out for not even that long. Like, what has it been? Maybe less than a month? Game has been out and, uh, you know, dope. It's amazing. It's fully featured. It actually has functioning online. It has real rollback netcode to the point where we didn't know if it was real rollback netcode for a while. And yeah, it totally is. I kind of wanted to talk about, because this is something I definitely follow, right? You shouldn't. You shouldn't really need to follow sales, but for somebody that's like industry savvy and sales are is an important metric of like, you know, not just popularity of a game because some games can seem insanely popular, uh, like Guilty Gear Strive when it came out, but then take like a year to even get 1 million sales, which is like, that doesn't make any sense. Like what the, so anyway, there's a big disconnect between like what the, what the FGC is and what is popular within the FGC compared to how broadly popular are fighting games. Again, Mortal Kombat and Smash Brothers are in their own universes. But if we're talking about the overall perspective, wide, wide picture public of fighting games, uh, believe it or not, when you get away from those two big giants, those massive super giants in, this, in, the, in, this, in the solar system of fighting games, it isn't Street Fighter that comes right after that. Weirdly enough, it's Tekken. It isn't Tekken by a wide margin, but throughout the history of releases and sort of the pantheon of the Street Fighter series, which you think would be the next biggest one, obviously. Shockingly not, Tekken has sort of had its ups and downs, but overall, the Tekken series has sold more than the Street Fighter series, believe it or not. And that is because of a very good reason that we have literally just discussed on our entire Tekken legacy. Tekken is a game that has survived and thrived because of its casual audience. It hasn't been the esports side of it. It hasn't been the competitive side of it. It hasn't been like all of the high level gameplay. No, none of that shit. Tekken is a game that has survived because it has had the most content for casuals of almost any fighting game out there next to Smash Brothers titles and obviously NetherRealm Studios games. So Injustice and Mortal Kombat. Even if you look at a lot of the the history of Capcom fighting games, dude, the majority of them are not that. Majority of them are just the arcade versions of those games, and that's it. And then some of them get a bit more stuff here and there, but obviously Street Fighter VI is, you know, the first example of, oh no, you get an actual full game with this, oh God. With that being said, Tekken 8's no different. Tekken 8 is uh, once again offering more stuff in it per capita than any other Tekken game at this point. There's just a ton of content. It's actually good online. It has a great story mode. It has one of the best story modes in my opinion. It's got all the things that people expect a fighting game to have. Well, <laughs> sales numbers are out and it's sold 2 million copies since launch. Is that getting close to any wild stuff like Call of Duties or Minecrafts or GTAs? It's not, but for a fighting game to sell more than 2 million copies that is not a Smash Brothers or an NRS game, a WB NetherRealm game, uh, that is huge. That's actually faster than almost any other mainline fighting game in a very long time. This probably is the fastest selling Tekken game. And I don't know if we have the hard data of things like Tekken 3, but to push 2 million units before even a month is out, they even said that they were not expecting sales like this. For a lot of fighting games, just as comparative, pushing 2 million sales within a year is successful. So that's really good. Again, reiterating that it is selling faster than Tekken 7. 7 took about two months to sell 2 million units while 8 did it under, in under three weeks. And there's, there's some very good stories behind why this game is successful and um, why it feels like Street Fighter uh, could be more successful. You know, even though it's doing super well, Street Fighter VI is, is a game that obviously is feature rich, has a ton of stuff people like, obviously needing more content that we're just hoping is gonna come up soon, but clearly is selling great and is selling comparatively to Street Fighter IV in the same time frame. So this isn't a video or a topic that's gonna be, oh, Street Fighter or Tekken, which one better, or Mortal Kombat, which one better. This is more of a telltale of what sales actually mean and why sales can be attributed to either good sales or bad sales or whatnot because all games have their their draw of what's really important and it's just nice to see that a game like Tekken and Street Fighter can actually thrive because these games are indeed thriving Street Fighter is getting pretty close to uh either three million units sold or it sold it not that long ago which was about you know six-ish months after it came out very good right and both games have wonderful word of mouth Street Fighter and, and, and Tekken are in like the best spots they ever have been but 
There's a reason why Tekken is doing inherently a little bit better than Street Fighter. There's a good reason. And you have to put yourself in the in the shoes of an average consumer, which I do a lot <laughs> of somebody that is just looking for a game and is like, yo, wonder if this is gonna be good. And to be real, Street Fighter VI had probably one of the most challenging hurdles of any of these games. The reason being, the previous iteration of Street Fighter was bad. By many considerations, maybe not myself overall, I'll actually consider Street Fighter V a pretty good game over time, but that impression, that stain that Street Fighter V's launch its first year or so sort of left, never left the casual market. I'll tell you what, dude. Even when the game got a billion characters, better mechanics, better online or whatever, you know, all that stuff was changed or added, it didn't matter. That first impression stayed the entire way, all the way through the game's, you know, eventual seven to eight million sales, which it did pretty good over a very long period of time. Street Fighter VI had a tough route because if you're a Street Fighter fan, obviously you're gonna buy Street Fighter VI, but we weren't concerned about Street Fighter fans buying Street Fighter VI. The whole point of Street Fighter VI turning into something different was to grab their audience that they essentially betrayed, that a lot of people felt aggressively betrayed. The same thing with like the Marvel vs. Capcom series with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, like Capcom and their last iterations of fighting games kind of betrayed their fan bases in many ways, which was kind of, in my opinion, the second dark ages of Capcom fighting games. It was very brutal. The fact that Street Fighter VI, comparatively, has been able to sell as good as it has, quite literally a testament and a word of mouth that like, oh, this shit bangs, bro. No, this is actually not that bullshit you remember. This is a new, this is a new vision, it's good. And you know, obviously we know that. We're just waiting on the eventual content updates and things like that to really get that game to have some more marketability to make any more sales. So what is the difference here? Tekken 7, in comparison with Tekken 8, is a much different situation than previous games. Let's go back a little bit before that, right? Because I, I lived this shit, bro. Made videos about all of this stuff for several years. Tekken 7 didn't have the most illustrious sales of a fighting game at launch. It did fine, right? It did okay. But as they said, Tekken 7 took at least a couple months to get 2 million unit sales. And that's like less than I think even what Street Fighter 6 is doing? Maybe, right? Just maybe. Here's the comparison. What came before Tekken 7? What was the precedent that was set up in the audience? Well, the previous game was Tekken 6 and Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Tekken 6 did okay, but we're clearly losing people here and Tag 2 really fell off the deep end. I'm not talking about the quality of the games. The games are, whether or not you individually feel that way, the sales representation was that something's not pulling people in anymore. Eventually, by the time we get to Tekken Tag 2, it was like, all right, this is not working. We need to reevaluate. And that's what they kind of did with Tekken 7, delaying the console release by a long time, actually adding a big story mode, like all of this stuff. There was concentrated efforts to uh, at least make Tekken more marketable back in 2017 when it came out, delaying it by two years, you know? Tekken 7 ends up selling pretty good in the first two months, but was it astronomical? It wasn't. Tekken 7 would get a lot of its sales later on. It would have legs. It would have legs that would continue to walk throughout a lot of its lifespan that would add sales and add sales and add sales over time. This happened to also Ultimate Marvel 3, sold like 50K units in the first month, but ended up selling like 1.5 to 2 million units. It was very good. The nice part about fighting games, uh, they, they, they can last as long as they get that appropriate those appropriate content updates so tekken 8 has a legacy coming from tekken 7. what was tekken 7 to a lot of people oh it was it was a pretty good tekken that was the game that was dope that was the game that had all those cool stories that had to be told about about esports and stuff that you either liked or potentially disliked the crazy story mode or something like that like there's a billion crazy characters in it it was essentially as we described in our tekken 7 legacy the fighting game for the world not just one region but it was kind of the fighting game for everybody so Tekken 7 had a lot. All it did was like, you get these games where it's like, the previous game slammed the door on you. That's what Street Fighter 6 was dealing with. The door was closed. They had to find the goddamn key. Tekken 7 leading into Tekken 8, guess what was happening? The door was ajar. All you had to do was just push it open, Neo. Just walk through the door, walk the path. And that's what Tekken 8 did. That isn't to give Street Fighter 6 or Tekken 8 not their just credit because 
what happens when you know that the previous game has set a precedent that Tekken 7 had a lot of content in it and, and enough to make people relatively happy but now you need to one up what that previous game was it's got to look better it's got to provide and what I can emphatically say is that yeah Tekken 8 is one of the best fighting game bang for your bucks out there dude just in terms of like the way they treat costumes the way they treat roster the roster is massive for a launch fighting game at 30 characters dude even Dragon Ball Fighters was a 3v3 team game it didn't have nearly that many characters when it came out so there's just a lot to do in this game and it runs good online they pretty much one upped almost every single aspect that was Tekken 7 and that was not cheap it was super expensive and I have to remind people this is likely the most expensive Japanese made fighting game of all time I don't think we can think of any other fighting game Smash Brothers included that came out of Japan that cost as much money as Tekken 8 did it shows you actually see it in the content of the game and you see it in the visuals and it truly is something special so i'm just happy to report that really good games will fucking sell we we see it every once in a while like remember that hell divers 2 game that game looked like mad straightforward in uh any of the trailers right but word of mouth is word of mouth and a good game is a good game and people are just hooting and hollering this shit slaps brother and that gets around that really does get around tekken 8 is no different almost everybody that experiences this thing has good things to say about it it quite literally feels like we're in a golden era once again and now we have a situation where Tekken feels quite literally as big and if not even better than back in the Tekken 3 and Tekken 5 days, which were pinnacle Tekken. We're never gonna get as good and as much as the feelings of those old games, we're never gonna get there. No, 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 we've, we've, they've gotten there. They actually did it. This isn't a Street Fighter 6 versus Tekken 8 sales. Both games comparatively are selling super well. Capcom is doing better than they ever have been right now. They have a hit fighting game that is going to eventually do great by the time their next season comes along, whenever the hell we see it. And there's a ton more stuff that's added to the game, much less, you know, Akuma and all that crazy bullshit. And we don't even know the goddamn guest characters for Tekken 8, dude. That was the biggest selling point of this game. Like Tekken 7 got most of its sales and its huge marketing push and word of mouth from crazy ass guest characters that were eventually added over time we don't even know if that's going to happen but i would be 1000 percent dumbfounded if tekken 8 didn't take advantage of what they already set them up for with the previous game and some expectations that people already have all i'm saying is that this is just the beginning it's just the beginning for street fighter 6 it's just the beginning for Tekken 8. We're not even a year into these games yet. They're all gonna be mechanically fucked. I'm gonna guarantee you that right now. Street Fighter 6 had a really solid start. All fighting games are mechanically fucked in their first iterations. And this game will be no different. There will be stupid, busted ass shit that they're gonna have to eventually reevaluate, retune, and add more stuff to. Street Fighter VI will also be no different. They're gonna reevaluate, retune, and add a bunch of new stuff to it. That is just the nature of all fighting games. But at least the first versions of these games is genuinely fun. And we have something that is enjoyable to play online, has a lot to do in the games, looks friggin' amazing. I feel like I'm still in a honeymoon phase with Tekken 8 especially, and kinda Street Fighter 6, because the last couple times I've gone back to Street Fighter 6 over the past like couple of months, I'm like, damn dude, this game's good. All I can say is that I'm thrilled with both of these games and their performance, and it really shows. It really shows that the expectations of what a fighting game can be, have dramatically changed in the past five years. And now, as a result, developers and publishers, when they do it right, are reaping the rewards.